Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I know it's uh, the end of day, uh, or the end of the two days, and we are uh, late for approximately one hour. Uh, I understand uh, your patience, uh, and I, uh, I'm wishing to make the best out of the ending of this conference, which I enjoyed myself, uh, I'd like to start by introducing myself, and I have Shalabi. Uh, my PhD is in Economics of Sustainable Development, Free University of Berlin. Uh, researcher or academician. And my is Economics of Sustainable Development in uh, Maastricht, the Masters and PhD programs. Uh, I have academic hat, which is very important in the context that we are talking research hat, طبعا. Next, I'm a policy advisor to a European Parliament and the Mostri and Accordingly, I have a policy hat to some extent. I have a few important studies in the Arab Spring and the strategies in the Arab Spring, either in the field of sustainability or climate change. Third, uh, and why uh, I'm here today, uh, I'm a chairman and CEO of the Carbon Egypt. ودي كاربون ايجيبت هي شركه بتشتغل مع 10 ديفرنت سيكتورز طبعا وان اوف ذا مين سيكتورز اللي بنشتغل معاهم هو الفاينانشال سيكتور ف وي ار كونسلتنج ا نمبر اوف بانكس اند فاينانشال انستيتيوشنز ان ذير ترانسفورميشنال جيرني ستارتنج فروم الاستراتيجيز البوليسيز الريبورتنج الجفرننس اند ذا لايك وبالتالي خبرتي شويه بتدمج او بتمزج ما بين البوليسي دايركشن بوليسي هات the research and academic hat, and the business consultation hat. And this is something that is very crucial in the field of sustainability. Because sustainability is a knowledge paradigm rather than being a skills-driven paradigm. Uh, this is about me. About sustainability, or about this uh, uh, panel, I would like first to set the stage or the floor. I think we are oriented with uh, uh, different backgrounds with Aetna. Uh, uh, two facts as starting points. Fact number one about sustainability and sustainable finance is you know that there is no one size fits all. Sustainability means different things to different sectors and even inside the same sector it means different things to different departments and even uh, on the departmental level HR for example for the Bank Al-Ahli will see sustainability differently from QMB despite that it's also HR and may see it also differently from other bank. But accordingly, sustainability is a, a, an eyeglass that we need to wear, and each one has his own eyeglass in order to debug this buzzword. This is fact number one, and I think one of the major things that we will need to align on today is to debug these words. Fact number two, and on a high level, uh, in order to bring everybody on the boat, sustainability in its high end, is the way capitalism is trying to correct itself by itself. Capitalism, على مدار 60, 70 سنة, can have one objective, شايفه هو major objective على national level, which is GDP growth rates. And accordingly, the bottom line بتاعنا على مستوى الشركات والfinancial sector بقى profitability. بعد 50, 60 سنة, اكتشفنا إنه في مشكلتين كبار قوي. مشكلة الأولانية هي على social front. Which is related to the inequalities between the people, between the north and the south, and between uh, the north and the south in the same country, is becoming very high. We even have a coefficient, it's uh, Gini coefficient. Ten uh, percent uh, of the Egyptian population is enjoying fifty percent of the Egyptian wealth, and accordingly, there is something that needs to be corrected here. This is on the social front. On the environmental front, في مشكلة تانية كمان ظهرت كبيرة جدا إن كل اللي إحنا بنتحدث عنه النهاردة دوت بكل السيكتورز دي does not represent more than one percent of the story. Ninety-nine percent of the story is that we have been gifted by God with resources, and كل اللي إحنا بنحاول نعمله هنا هو عملية إدارة للresources دي. وكمان احنا ما احترمناش الريسورسز ذات واز جيفتد تو اس احنا بنعمل لها ديبليشن بشكل متطوق مخيف جدا وكمان بنعتبر ان الايكو سيستم اللي بيدينا كل الهبات دي 
از اور الباك يارد اللي بنرمي فيه مخلفاتنا فاكوردنجلي كابيتاليزم لما اكتشفت المشكلتين دول ابتدت تديفلوب ان انترنال كوركشن ميكانيزم ذيس انترنال كوركشن ميكانيزم وي كان تيرم تو دي سستينابيليتي سو سستينابيليتي از ا واي ذات كابيتاليزم از تراينج تو تيك كير اوف اتس ميستيكس باي اتس سيلف طيب at the heart of capitalism is the financial institutions and the financial institutions will need to play a very important role if we want to create this transition in just 60 seconds هل يا ترى the financial institutions as we speak right now has taken uh, uh, the steps towards uh, transforming itself هي كمان وتفكر بالمايند سيت دي الاجابه is yes and it is yes inside an ecosystem ست جاست ان تو ييرز ست خطوات رئيسيه اتخذتهم الحكومه المصريه فروم ماي برسبكتيف ان وات اي كان كول ا هول جفرنمنت ابروتش ذيس هول جفرنمنت ابروتش از نمبر 1 دستور مصري اتكلم عن الاستدامه وهو الاول في العالم استراتيجيه مصريه للتنميه المستدامه 2030 بيتم تحديثها لاطلاقها قبل كوب 27 استراتيجيه مصريه للتغيرات المناخيه كل قطاع ابتدى يحط استراتيجيته الخاصه وبعد كده نيجي بقى للايه؟ للفاينانشال سيكتور والفاينانشال سيكتور شاف سستينابيليتي من وجهه نظر وهي ايه؟ وي وير كونفيكتد باي ميكينج ذا ريتش ريتشر اند ذا بور بورر. اكوردنجلي كل اللي احنا سمعناه في البانل اللي قبل كده. البانل اللي قبل كده كانت بتتكلم عن هاو اس ام ايز. كان نفسي اعمل انترفينشن جدا واقول قبل ما نعرف هاو اس ام ايز وي نيد تو اندرستاند واي اس ام ايز. بيكوز اس ام ايز اند فاينانشال انكلوجن is the way that the banking system, or one of the ways the banking system is going to correct itself by itself in addressing the inequality gap. For accordingly, this is very important when we come to redefine sustainability on the banking sector front. This is the lens. طيب الحكومة المصرية عملت إيه؟ ما اكتفتش بأنها وضعت استراتيجيات عليا تدت تحط استراتيجيات قطاعية. For just in one year, إحنا فوجئنا كلنا كبانكينج سيكتور بالقرارات اللي ورا بعض. قرار هيئه الرقابه الماليه 107 و108 addressing all listed companies to comply and all non banking financial institutions جه بعديها على طول السيركلر بتاع البنك المركزي اللي ابتدى يقول لحضراتكم بليز وي ابريشيت ان انتوا تبتدوا تشتغلوا على السستينبل فاينانس جه كمان قرار داعم مؤخرا او قرارين داعمين مؤخرا في البوليسي اركتكتشر في مصر واحد هو اطلاق وثيقه آآ آآ الملكيه بتاعه الدوله which will open the door to the private sector, and I'm calling everybody here in the floor to read it carefully, coupled by a final decision which was related to host COP27 وما استتبعوا هذا القرار. وبالتالي أنا عندي a world movement, عندي كمان a government, a whole government movement بتتحرك مع بعضها, where we are gathered today here, وكمان عندنا a sector. movement that I believe is very strong and nothing will succeed uh, without having them. Uh, Amin, Amin, Amin Fulcrum, uh, uh, behind the success of this movement, من عدمها, هو partnerships. And that's why uh, uh, I would like to welcome on this panel uh, Mrs. Joanna Ditch, sustainability expert and PRB implementation support manager at the UNEP FI. Hiya Lyonep FI uh, have a very big role to play in identifying the impact of the port what the portfolio have on uh, the economy and the society. Dr. Dalia Abdel Adar, uh, uh, Chief Sustainability Officer, Commercial International Bank. Uh, Mr. Remco Fisher, Climate Lead at the UNEP FI. And Mr. Faris uh, Kikanu, Lead Technical Expert for Sustainable Energy Finance, Advisory Services in the Middle East and Africa, IFC. Uh, الحقيقه البارتنرشيبس على البانل دي از واكروس البانلز اللي قبل كده واز فيري كلير تو مي وي ويل نيفر بي ايبل تو دو ا ترانزيشن في الفاينانشال سيكتور وذاوت ميكينج بارتنرشيبس وهنا الحقيقه بستعين بكلمه الدكتوره داليا دايما بتكررها في كل حته كنا زمان بنتكلم دايما كومبيتيشن او كنا بنتكلم كووبريشن ان ذا سستينابيليتي وورلد وي ماست توك Co-opetition. And co-opetition means you are not because you are my competitor, you are a, you are my enemy. La, there are common areas that we will need to coordinate in, and there are common areas, other areas that we can uh, 
compete uh, in. Uh, uh, I'd like uh, to thank all of the panelists uh, for being here and supporting Egypt, in fact, in its journey, either the IFC, the UNEP-FI, the CIB, and all of the supporting organizations. And to jump uh, directly into the story, to structure this panel, and I'm going to panel on two levels. The level of the and I'm going to a quick run in a question with an answer in a short time, after going deeply into the details of what is sustainable finance, how it resonates to us, what is its business case, and how can we implement. So my first question would go to uh, 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 Mr. Ferris. And uh, Mr. Ferris, uh, I'd like you to give the floor your perspective on what is sustainable banking, or green banking, and what is the role of the IFC in assisting organization in making these transitions? Sure. Thank you very much, and first allow me to take the opportunity to thank EBI and to thank you, and uh, I'm very happy to be here, and as always, you know, a pleasure to be with Dr. Ihab and Dr. Dalia and the rest of the panelists on these um, very interesting discussions. So, just putting things into perspective and talking about greening a bank or green banking, um, first of all, mo moving towards the, the green banking model um, definitely, in general, will improve the reputation, the image, uh, including through climate disclosure, which is something that is becoming required now, as the bank moves towards more strategic commitments. Um, it is also important that to, to know that this journey will generate significant business opportunities, and we're witnessing this. There is, there is substantial business opportunities in this sector by deploying green products and uh, services, deleveraging the risk of the overall portfolio, and implementing the risk management strategies and climate risk management. All this coupled with increasing the efficiencies of the bank itself, of its operations, leading by example. So if we want to summarize uh, the four main, what we see as the four main pillars of the Green Bank, first of all, the first one and the most important is the green strategic commitment, start, starting with the vision and the objectives, the commitment from top management, the communication, measurement and reporting, so this is also under the green strategic commitment, the organizational structure, the culture, and alignment with the frameworks and the policies and the requirements. So this is the first, let's say, main pillar. The second is more on the operations, which covers the green product and services, which is the go-to-market strategy and what the bank puts forward to its client in the market. The third one, and which is a very important and a hot topic, and you know, uh, during the different discussions I have the chance to have with the, with the, with the audience and the presence, um, we're, um, we're witnessing more and more demand for this particular aspect because of the regulatory requirements to report and to provide, the, uh, let's say, climate dis disclosure under TCFD framework. So, the third pillar would be the climate risk management, a very important one that starts with the portfolio carbon intensity, understanding what's, what's the exposure of the bank, whether from its own operation, but from its own portfolio as well, and assessing how aligned the portfolio is with the Paris Agreement scenarios, and finally translating those climate risks into financial risks through stress testing. So, third one, would be the climate risk management. And last but not least, the corporate resources efficiency and the, the bank operations greening, its, the bank internal operations through carbon footprint measurements, uh, reduction in water, in energy, in waste, green building certification of its own premises, uh, green supply chain, supporting the supply chain uh, into transitioning as well. So not only supporting the client, but also supporting the own supply chain of the bank. So green strategic commitment, green products and services, climate risk management, and own resources efficiency and own energy efficiency. 
that's thank that's really a summary, but I'm sure that we can elaborate throughout the discussion. Definitely, and thank you so much. Let's let's draw again, or let's conclude the picture, the beautiful picture that uh, Ferris drawn. Ferris is saying that when we are saying sustainable banking, we can see it from three different angles. The th first angle is the banking internal operations. What about your energy efficiency, your renewable energy, your procurement strategies, uh, your HR policies, and so on. So this is the first angle. As if we are cleaning the house internally, and as if the bank is a company, a normal company, our corporates. The second angle that, for us, uh, that Ferris is uh, uh, projecting is the angle of the portfolio. Because you are not only a corporate, you are a corporate with a product which is the portfolio. So uh, he is drawing a picture here that you are also responsible for your portfolio and all the sectors you are lending definitely have impacts on the economy, society, nationally, regionally and globally. And the third angle that he is talking about when we talk about sustainability is the risks that climate change carry to our portfolio. And I think it's a sort of stress testing, but climate stress testing here. So we are all faced with physical risks and transitional risks. So the question that may arise here, what would be the implication? And these are, not, uh, uh, these are not example questions. These are facts are on the table nowadays. Question number one, what is the implication of the European Union enforcing uh, on all of the Egyptian experts to produce an environmental product declaration by the mid of June 2023. What will this have uh, uh, as an impact on our portfolio? And second, what is the implication of Egypt producing uh, in the coming couple of months its national determined contribution, where the Egyptian government is going to put some targets on itself on different sector to reduce? So when we are talking sustainability, we are talking internal operations, we are also talking portfolio and our impact on the rest of the world, and there is an external element which is how climate change externally will affect our portfolio. Th those are the three major uh, horizontal, uh, sorry, vertical uh, axes that we will need to debug. Type. Uh, taking this conclusion to Dr. Dalia, can you highlight that in practice the journey of the CIB in addressing these three components and pillars? Please. 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 في جزء من الجورني دي. Uh, and then I will zoom على ال practice نفسه أو ال implementation جوا CIB. ال concept اللي عايزين نتفق فيه مفهوم التمويل المستدام أو الاستدامة. Uh, المفهوم ده عايزين نتفق هو uh, logical جدا لاستمرار لـ تحقيق النمو على مستوى المؤسسات أو الشركات أو على مستوى الاقتصاديات بصفة عامة. يا الاستدامة خلينا نقولها استدامة النمو بس عشان يحصل استدامة للنمو لازم نعيد مفهوم ومنظورنا للجروث How can we achieve growth الجروث اللي احنا خدناه وتعلمناه انه profit بقى في دلوقتي يعني ازمات كتيرة جدا بتقول لنا لا احنا مركزين على البروفيت والإيكونوميك والفاينانشل وسايبين كل الإيكو سيستم اللي حوالينا السنة دي ويمكن لسه قالها امبارح في البانل الذكرى ال50 لتقرير طلع من ام اي تي حاجه اسمها كلاب اوف روم سنه 72 اسمه ذا ليميتس تو جروث التقرير ده كان مهم جدا سنه 72 وكان الاسامبشن ان لو البشريه استمرت بنفس نمط الانتاج والاستهلاك هنوصل لزيرو جروث بعد 100 سنه فيا جماعه خلي بالكم من حاجه اسمها انفايرمنت يا ايكونوميك entities, يا بنوك, يا corporates, لأني we cannot grow وإحنا مش واخدين ال ecosystem in mind. ليه؟ قال لك في حاجة اسمها bio capacity. خد من التل يختل. بالورقة والقلم ال resources في mother earth cannot serve our economic system, our systems. And we will not grow. وأنا بقول إن هما كانوا 
يعني اوبتيمستيك لان بعد 50 سنه النمو ما رجعش ابدا زي ما كان. وخلينا نشوف احنا النظام الاقتصادي العالمي والمؤسسات الماليه تعثرت فين؟ ما تعثرتش عشان مش عارفه تحقق ارباح. يمكن مصطلح التمويل المستدام ظهر في التسعينات بعد ازمات كثيره جدا ظهرت في العالم فرقت بين النمو فلوس وبين التنميه التصحر والفقر والتلوث عشان كده ظهر التنميه المستدامه اقول لك اهم سيكتور هو القطاع المصرفي سستيبل فانس ظهر في التسعينات بس ما تفعلش ليه احنا كنا بنكسب في ثلاث ازمات حصلوا واكدوا لنا ان النمو لازم ياخد في اعتباره ثلاثه بيلرز دولت لازم يكونوا قدامنا احنا كمؤسسات لو عايزين نستمر في النمو اي ديسكونكشن بين البيزنس موديل والاي اس جي اللي هو الجفرنس والسوشيال والانفايرومنتال هو نظير بالارمينج ان انت مش سستينبل هتقع براكتيكلي سبيكينج اول ضربه للقطاع المالي كانت 2008 كان جفرنس ايشو البنوك يعني وقعت في عز قدرتها على تحقيق النمو اللي هم تو بيج تو فيل ذا جفرنس ايشو واز سلايتد وقعوا تاني ازمه سوشيال عمر ما حد تخيل ان كوفيد او فيروس هيسبب اسوء ازمه اقتصاديه من ايام الحرب الحرب العالميه الثانيه اكتر من الفاينانشال كرايسس يعني الازمه بتاعت كوفيد اكتر من الازمه بتاعت الفاينانشال كرايسس ودلوقتي كل الريبورتس بتاكد ان الازمه اللي جايه الكلايمت اللي هي الانفايرومنتال هتبقى اكتر من كوفيد بكتير وهتغير كل حاجه فاللي احنا عايزين نتفق عليه عشان نقدر يبقى العمليه لوجيكال كونسبت اوف جروث وي هاف تو ري فيزيت هاو وي جرو ويز ذا انفايرومنت سوشيال جفرنس ان مايند اللي هو العالم المحيط بينا لو احنا خدنا ده في كل فانكشن داخل البنك اتس لوجيكال يعني بعد كده بعد ما اتفقنا على الكونسبت هنتكلم على السيستم اند هاو تو امبلمنت كده حلو اه اه كده؟ اوكي. ثانك يو دكتور داليا، طيب خلينا ناخد من كلام دكتور داليا اي ثينك شي واز توكينج اباوت ذا واي اند ليت اس سيبريت ذا واي اون تو تو ليفلز. واي ذات از جنرال ذات مي اند يو اند فارس توكد اباوت ان جنرال بس في واي ذات از بارتيكولارلي ريليتد تو ذا بانكينج اندستري. فور ذا بانكينج اندستري اند فروم ماي اكسبيرينس ويز وركينج ويز بانكس ان ايجيبت اند ذا جولف ليت مي انتروديوس تو يو سفن وايز quickly that I can see was the reason behind uh, uh, why banking are, are transforming. And in Egypt, in particular, fi wahda why I would like to get your guess on why it, is the, why it was the most notable in Egypt. Seven whys. Why number one, why banking are transforming? To attract foreign direct investments. Sustainable investments globally now, according to the global Business Alliance is 31, exceeding 31 trillion uh, assets under management, increasing by 16% annually. What does this mean? This means you know, by 2030, there will be nothing called sustainable finance. There will only be finance and unsustainable finance. But this is the fact number one. Fact number two, uh, attracting uh, uh, foreign direct finance. The green bond as an example for CIB, uh, uh, the lending portfolio of the IFC, the EBRD, and the like, all of those attracting funds, that's why what is pushing banks towards addressing sustainability are transforming. Third reason is the regulatory reasons, FRA decisions, CBE directions, and the like. Fourth reason, uh, and I can see it very clear in Egypt, is what we can call market peer pressure. And this is very clear for me in Egypt. It's a peer partially, it's a peer pressure game. Who did it? Fulen or Fulen or Fulen? Then I must be on the list. Okay? Type. Next, and which is also very important, and I think this uh, needs to be uh, educated on a lot leadership. Uh, uh, some banks have visionary leaders who understand and take actions to be ahead of the game uh, in some respects. Those are examples of particularly. Uh, why banks in Egypt has joined the movement in the uh, past couple of years, or maybe uh, before, 
بس وي كان ساي ات ذيس بوينت از ذات وات اي كان سي ان ذا ماركت انه قبل الريجيلاتوري ديسيجن بيفور ذا ريجيلاتوري ديسيجن باي اف ار اي اند ذا سي بي اي وي وير ويتنسينج ا موفمنت ذات ووز اونلي دومينيتد باي ليدرشيب اور اتراكتينج فورين فاينانس اند انفستمنت توداي ذير از ذا اذر ريزنز ذات ار انترينج انتو ذا بيكتشر اند برينجينج مور باكس تو ذا تو ذا ستوري اند اند ذاتس واي اي ثينك وي ار اول هير طيب Now let's have a, a quick focus on the portfolio part, which is the most important for us. And at this point, I'd like to welcome Mrs. Joanna Ditch. Uh, Joanna, are you with us? Yes, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, can we have Joanna on the screen, please? Cheers. Okay. Hello, Joanna. Uh, very nice uh, to have you with us, and I'd like to thank you personally Uh, I think this is the second time to meet in a couple of days. Thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, and let me jump into the question directly. Can you give a brief description uh, on the UNEP FI work in Egypt and how you help banks into their transformational journey? Absolutely, thank you. But before getting started, good afternoon uh, to everybody in your valuable audience. Uh, it's great um, to be here. I'm sorry to not be able to attend in presence. Um, I'd like to express my gratitude to the Central Bank of Egypt, EBI, to host this really interesting conference and also to have me and, and my colleague, Unibifi, is very present in this panel. So thank you so much um, for that opportunity. Um, I would share a couple of uh, slides to really present a bit about the principles for responsible banking framework as well as what Unibify does on a very high level. And I think many of those points will speak to what was mentioned also already before, why You know, why are we doing, why are we doing this at all? Um, very briefly, Unibify is a partnership between the United Nations and the global finance sector. We work with banks, insurers, investors, um, uh, and the like, overarching aim is to serve people and planet, really. And why we're doing this is in addition to all the market forces that you have mentioned that they have, I think it's also to address what we have, what we call within UNEP, uh, the triple planetary crisis, being climate change, biodiversity loss, and pollution, accompanied by what we see increasing social inequality. So this is the big picture, um, why, why we're doing this. And we develop a, lo a lot of guiding norms, such as PRI um, was hosted underneath UNEP FI, the PSI, the Principles for Sustainable Insurance, as well as the PRB, the Principles for Responsible Banking. Um, this is to give you a bit of an overview that this has this journey has been going on actually since the 90s when Unibify was established. And there was a big push with COP21 and the Paris Climate Agreement and also when the UN Sustainable Development Goals were established um, in 2015. And you see that, the, as you know, as everybody has experienced, there's a lot of dynamics happening in, uh, recently in the last two to three years. The PRB were established, the collective commitment to climate action, the CCCA, followed by the Net Zero Asset Owner Alliance, the Net Zero Insurance Alliance, the Net Zero Banking Alliance. There's also, um, after TCFD is now work happening on TNFD and so on and so forth. Um, speaking to the principles for responsible banking, we have 290 signatory banks representing 45% of the global banking sector. That is a number of roughly 85 trillion US dollars and 66 countries present, one of them, of course, being Egypt. Um, Just to give you a bit of an overview of the market penetration, this is the biggest region that we have. And we see um, that, for example, Europe, um, what you have is the 10 biggest banks per region here. And Europe is um, quite represented, Middle East and Africa at the moment isn't. So um, this is also something that we're trying to work on and which is why it's great to be on that conference today here because of course we would like to have more membership in the MENA region as well. Um, I would actually pause here um, because um, for the principles themselves, I think we can dig into them a bit later. Um, the, uh, the question about Egypt and what, um, 
we're doing in Egypt is we actually have six signatory banks from Egypt. Um, they are AAB, Alex Bank, Bank du Kai, uh, CIB, who's the president on the panel today, National Bank of Egypt, as well as Bank Nezra. And we have uh, a lot of programs directed at the MENA region, um, including workshops, what PAB actually means, how to implement them, and covering different aspects from impact analysis, target setting, specifically work on climate, but then also on uh, TCFD and other things. I would so just stop here um, because I think we will touch upon many of the other topics um, still. Joanna, before Thank leaving you. us, uh, I'd like to have a question from you. How many banks are signatories from Egypt? How many? Uh, I mentioned, it's, uh, sorry, you didn't get, it's six signatory banks from Egypt. Okay. Did you hear? I, I named them. Did you hear them? What's that? Okay. Now, but I'd like to ask another question. How many founding signatory banks do they have on FFI? Um, we started with, I think, uh, roughly 130 founding signatories. And you see that in the last two and a half years, the uh, membership has grown fundamentally. So it's more than doubled um, in, in the last uh, two and a half years. Okay. I think today we have something between six and seven banks who are signatory to the NEPFI. And we started by three founding banks. It was the Arab African Bank, the CIB, and I think Bank Masr also. Okay, so we only have the Arab African and CIB. The Arab African and the CIB was among the founding signatory banks on, uh, uh, on the ONEP FI type. To summarize what Joanna has presented, the ONEP FI uh, uh, has a beautiful tool uh, which is impact assessment and target setting. And let me debrief the tool for you. This tool collects the data of your portfolio segment it according to the ISEC classification. We enter the data on the tool where the tool have in the back end associations with sectors. So for example, the tool after entering the portfolio would allow us to understand what is our impact on the economy, society, and on different 22 impact areas. And then we enter the country needs. And in accordance with the country needs, the importance of the issue elaborates. So to give you an example, part of our portfolio is the agriculture sector, and the agriculture sector is uh, hugely consuming water, so water now is an issue, and Egypt is a water-stressed country, so the issue comes forefront and center. So what, what the UNEP FI do in practice is that it is assisting bank in understanding their impacts, and also assisting them into setting targets on how they reduce their negative impacts on the economy and the society. Uh, Egypt has been among the founding signatory uh, banks, and I think uh, uh, many of the six and the seven banks in the journey uh, now on there for putting their uh, targets there. One of the major targets that appears across all of the context is climate change. So uh, uh, having said so, I would like to welcome also uh, Remco Fisher, uh, Remco, are, we, are you with us? I hope I am. Thank you. Can you hear me well? Yes, yes we can. Thank you so much. Uh, Remco, uh, having been uh, speaking about climate change and climate impact, uh, can you please uh, brief us uh, about your work with the UNEP FI and your major conclusion on this uh, area, which is climate change? Yes, uh, absolutely, um, and and it's also you know from my side a pleasure to be uh, with with all of you uh, today. Thank you, so to the EIB for the invitation. Um, I I would say that uh, the, the way uh, we approach climate change and the way we think financial institutions should approach um, the issue of climate change is that really they need to be on top of three different things when it comes to climate change. And all of these things that I'm gonna mention are at the portfolio level. So, you know, at UNEPFI, we barely focus, we do a little bit, but we barely focus on what financial institutions, you know, should do, shall do, uh, are encouraged to do when it's about their own operations their buildings, you know, their staff, commute, 
Uh, you know, the reason UNEPFI exists as a partnership <clears throat> between UNEP and financial institutions <clears throat> at the end of the day is the portfolios that you've mentioned. It's it, because that's the avenue through which financial institutions have so much influence on the real economy and so much impact on the real economy across sectors of the economy. And of course, it's that real economy that we need to ultimately make sustainable that we need to green. So all that's why most of our work, like I would say 90, 95% of our work, including on climate change, but also on other issues, focuses uh, on that element. And, 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 um, and obviously our mandate is, is that the finance sector over time becomes more sustainable itself. It greens itself, if you apply that to environmental sustainability, so that then it can use the tools that it has, the influence that it has, the means that it has, there, of which there are many, to also help green uh, and help make sustainable uh, the real economy. But what are the three then top things that we believe financial institutions need to be on top of when it comes to climate change and when it comes to also other sustainable areas? The first one is risk financial risks. It's something that, uh, that's that been mentioned already. Of course, we know that all of these macro trends, all of these uh, trends that result from unsustainability, from unsustainable behavior, one of which is climate change. Clearly, that's a result of uh, unsustainable economic behavior over many decades and many centuries, um, that, that those challenges lead in the risk landscape in the financial risks landscape that financial institutions are exposed. All of a sudden, you know, carbon intensive industries become financially more risky. Uh, carbon and the alternatives to that, carbon efficient, low carbon, zero carbon alternatives become less financially risky. And of course, this then is something that financial institutions should, um, shall perhaps, are encouraged uh, to um, uh, to be on top of, to be able to assess, identify, quantify, mitigate those risks uh, in a way to make their portfolios resilient. And we're, when we're talking about climate change, there are typically two main kinds of risks. One, the risks related to greenhouse gas emissions. Most greenhouse gas emissions come from the combustion of fossil fuel coal, oil, and gas. Those greenhouse gas emissions need to be going down for us to, in essence, save the planet. And so as those industries need to decarbonize, there's going to be winners and losers. Those who are able to decarbonize quickly will win. Those who are unable to decarbonize quickly in all likelihood will lose this race. Those are all risks that the financial institution needs to be on top of. The second risk is what we call the physical risks. So these are risks from physical climate change happening. I mean, it's basically, you look out the window and you see how the weather has changed and you see what's, what the impact of that on the economy. That's what we call physical risks. And at the moment, at the moment, the risks, the physical risks that we are seeing, so extreme weather, extreme events becoming more frequent, they've always existed, no doubt about it, but they're becoming more frequent and they're becoming more intense. And that's a result of climate change. And we can see that. That now is the result of a world today that is 1.5, uh, 1.2 degrees centigrade warmer than the pre-industrial world. So obviously climate change has been happening for some time and we're seeing the impacts of that. Now, of course, if we don't tackle climate change by reducing emissions, we're not gonna stay at 1.2 degrees of warming. We're gonna go all the way up to in between three to four degrees of warming by the end of the century. And so those physical impacts and by extension, the physical risks in such a scenario would be so pronounced that it would be you know, very hard for civilization to cope with them, uh, let alone for the finance sector. But we're hopeful still that we might be able to reduce emissions, greenhouse gas emissions in a way that that temperature outcome is less. And, um, and, 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 and still that those risks need to be managed. Risks, risks of less water, importantly for, for Egypt and the MENA region, 
a lot less water, a lot more heat. It's going to create great scarcities on water availability, the distribution of water, uh, et cetera. And there are many other such risks in the physical debate. Now, risks is one thing. This, and I mentioned there's three. The second one that financial institutions need to be on top of, opportunities. All of, you know, tackling climate change, addressing it, dealing, you know, you know, getting rid of the problem requires solutions, commercial solutions. And those are going to be the solutions of the future, the economy uh, success stories of the future, renewable energies, energy efficiency, water efficiency, sustainable agriculture, forestry, and financial institutions, of course, for them, it's a financial, it's an opportunity to be funding those opportunities. So that's number two. And you could say number one, risk, it's about risk, opportunities, that's about returns. But the third one is, from our perspective, equally important as UNEPFI. We believe that financial institutions, on top of being good managers of risk and return, they need to be responsible actors in the society. And they need to, beyond a risk and return equation, they need to be doing what's right. Um, because you can be a financial institution that is managing the risks and returns well, but still be a financial institution who is misaligned, whose portfolio is misaligned with the Paris Agreement. That's, very, that's happening today. That's where, where you're doing, you're taking the risk and the return box, but you're still not aligned with the economy that we need for us to be able to reach the Paris Agreement. And the only way to close that gap is by financial institutions also, in addition to managing the risks and opportunities, become more responsible actors in society. And that means for them to steer their portfolios so that their portfolios become compatible with the future that we need and, and that we want and that future that we need and that we want at the UN level has been uh, codified through the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, broadly, and on climate change specifically through the Paris Agreement and the net zero emissions by 2050 goal. Yes. So if we apply this responsibility imperative on the finance sector, what does it mean? It means financial institutions committing to transitioning their portfolios over time to net zero emissions by 2050. And that's exactly what we're doing at the moment at UNEP FI through the various net zero alliances of which there's a net zero banking alliance of which um, CIB under the leadership of Dr. Dahlia has been one of the founding members of. So I think that's really the story. That's our work and that it captures what we believe the financial institutions need to be on top of as they tackle and confront climate change. Uh, Remco, I cannot agree more, uh, and I would like you to allow me, while you are with us, to contextualize. I'd like to take all what Remco has said and put it into the Egyptian context. What does all what we have said? Because I've just delivered a, simil a very similar presentation yesterday on this issue, particularly this issue. And let me draw you the story from the Egyptian side, and I'd like to take afterwards your insights on. Uh, climate change, we are into this issue. The national govern the government of Egypt has promulgated, and for the first time, a national strategy on climate change called Egypt 2050. This is before the COP. Until today, Egypt does not have an NDC. It doesn't put a target on itself. But we are working on this right now. Some sectors will have targets of reduction. To your own uh, uh, knowledge, when we are going to put an NDC, we will have one of two approaches. The first approach is that we will come and segment sectors and see the highest emitters and require from them to decline the highest percentages. But another approach is that we quantify the cost of reduction and see the lowest cost reduction sectors and then put on them the highest targets. So there are two approaches to do this game. Currently, we are working very closely with the Egyptian Stock Exchange and the Ministry of Environment to produce the first of its kind carbon market in Egypt. And the carbon market would allow some sectors who have obligation to reduce and cannot to buy certificates from other markets. Type. Let's contextualize what Remco had said in the Egyptian context. In the Egyptian context, Egypt's emission 
from CO2 or from GHG, which is uh, simplified as CO2, is uh, 325 uh, million tons. So Egypt, in accordance to the latest estimation, emits 325 million tons. This 325 million tons represents 0.6% of the global climate emissions. So our contribution in the global climate emission is very, is very low. Where is the problem? The problem is that the increase in the emissions in Egypt is correlated one-to-one -one with two variables. The first variable is population growth rates, and the second variable is GDP growth rates, and we are among the highest in the world in both. In GDP growth rates, we exceeded 5% at one point, and in population growth rate, we exceeded 2% at one point. So this is the problem. The problem is not with the stock. The problem is with the flow type. Therefore, how should Egypt think? Egypt should think in decoupling economic and social growth from environmental declaration. So we went back and worked closely with the Egyptian government in producing a very strategic document called Egypt Green Recovery Strategy. Through this strategy, we identified six sectors that are leading economic development in Egypt. The first sector is the energy sector. The second is the agriculture. The third is the logistics and the ICT. The fourth is uh, uh, the health sector and the list goes type. After, what, what is the definition of a leading sector? A leading sector from an economic and social perspective is that have the highest contribution in the GDP and have the highest contribution in GDP growth rates and have the highest contribution in employment and have the highest contribution in attracting foreign direct investments. So after identifying these six sectors as leading economic growth sectors, what we did is that we tried to green, start greening these sectors. So for the energy sector, and I will leave the floor afterwards to Ferris, we will need to define what is greening the energy sector. Type. What has happened, and I have just mentioned it yesterday in a similar conference, is that just six, four to six months ago, all of the world, all of the international financial institutions has been focusing on the energy sector. But with the Russian-Ukrainian war, a new question popped in my face through different banks and different financial institutions. And the question was, Ihab, do you think this movement will continue or under the pressure of the war, we are going to come uh, uh, back? And the answer, my humble answer toward this is that this movement will continue but it will shift in the focus, meaning the focus in the coming period will not only be on the energy sector, but rather it will shift to the demand side of the energy sector, which is the green buildings, the green construction, and the green material. So we are now, the world, because we are in an energy crisis, will shift from focusing only on the supply side of energy and how to green it, to the demand side of energy and how can we green it. Exactly. Again, this is the national context we are working on. So what is beautiful in what you have brought to our understanding, Remco, is that as much as climate change is a risk, definitely it's a risk, but it's an opportunity for the financial sector in providing facilities to green these leading sectors. So if we took, for example, the energy sector, and here I will move back to, me, to Ferris, Ferris, I'd like you to bring us your experience as a sustainable finance expert in the energy sector. Yes? In fact, uh, uh, I'd like to address two questions with you. The first question is, uh, how do you see sustainable finance in the energy sector before and after the Ukrainian war? And do you think, there, or do you feel there was a change? And second, and because uh, I met many of you on the ground, either from the risk departments or credit, or uh, uh, corporates, I'd like also you to reflect for us on a very particular topic. How sustainable finance, from a technical perspective, uh, as a credit undertaking process and as a risk process, what are the major issues that differentiate the, uh, uh, sustainable finance from the traditional uh, finance perspective? Please. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ihab. So let me start by just 
providing few definitions when we see when we say when we talk about sustainable energy finance what exactly do we mean by that so simply put sustainable energy finance targets uh, specific assets on the energy efficiency side so quick example in the industrial sector replacing machines uh, increasing production capacity by reducing energy energy uh, demand so this is on the energy efficiency on the renewable energy obviously any renewable energy is is by definition uh, eligible under sustainable energy finance or climate finance also on the asset classes we can we can look at climate smart agriculture and you mentioned the how the, the water stress uh, context of the country and climate smart agriculture is actually more and more important in terms of of climate eligible assets because it it addresses uh, this particular uh, risk uh, and this particular risk that is presented by the water stress in the country. And finally, you gave the example of green buildings and green buildings is one important also asset class under sustainable energy finance. So in terms of opportunity, the opportunity is there across all these different asset classes. And there are many challenges, obviously, but if I want to just like shed the light on one specific challenge where the banking sector has a very important role in terms of catalyzing the communication between the different players of the value chain. I always like to give the example of the green buildings. So on the green building side, for example, you take the, the real estate developers. They don't, see in, like, they don't see any incentive for them to incur extra costs in terms of uh, additional costs for um, uh, integrating uh, energy efficiency measures into their buildings. From the other side, you know, the, the, the homeowners or the occupiers or the future occupiers would definitely like to see their energy bills and water bills dropping. So someone needs to create this like communication missing links between the different value chain players, the potential owners, occupiers, the developers, the investors. And this is what, you know, this is really the role of the bank here and this is the opportunity to turn this challenge into, into, some, into a, let's say, a, 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 let's say a drive within the sector to, to transition the built up environment into a greener environment and here reduce the demand and obviously become more resilient to crisis like the one that we are witnessing today. So today, why we are feeling the crisis? Because our demand has never been like optimized enough in order, for example, to, to let's say, rely on uh, certain renewable energy sources in order to achieve the minimum requirements that we need in order to, to sustain. So transitioning the built-up environment could potentially help in becoming more resilient to, to crisis like the one you just mentioned. But in general, this is one challenge that the bank can turn into an opportunity by catalyzing, and this is the, if, if you allow me, this is the uh, CIB has been playing this role by putting together all the value chain player in different sectors, making them talk to each other and understand what's the capabilities, what are the capabilities of the vendors, of the importers, of the suppliers, the integrators, the consultants, all the way to the developers, to the investors. So I, I believe that this is where the real opportunity of sustainable energy finance lies. Of course, there are challenges. One, one other main challenge is to convince uh, the beneficiaries that it makes business sense to them to transition. It makes business sense to go for more efficient equipment. It makes business sense to build green. So that is also something that I believe that the banking sector can play a very important role with, uh, with and that's actually our mission. So, so I leave it also to Dr. Dalia to comment on that yeah. and provide her own experience about this particular. You're doing topic. a good job. <laughs> I think in the Sahel Talaya, it will transfer a tool directly to Dr. Dalia. But before going to Dr. Dalia, you didn't answer my question. For credit undertakers here, what is the major difference you feel in the credit undertaking process? In between sustainable finance and uh, uh, traditional finance. Is there something technical that we need to address in their capacities to be able to sell products who have different features like this? Because this is not a facility. 
This is a product, correct? It's a very difficult question, actually. Yes, Thank I you know. for that. You know, and um, you always like to ask difficult questions. And it, the reason, you know, it's difficult to answer is because the journey is just starting. Yes. So today, you know, I, I think uh, another uh, fellow panelist has mentioned that whatever is new, like, you know, we put the risk hat and we start look, seeing it uh, from a risk perspective exactly. rather than from a business opportunity perspective. Agree. So it's very difficult to, today to say that during the credit underwriting process, all the advantages of cost saving, energy saving, are taken into consideration and considered as additional income for the beneficiary, and therefore we can, you know, we can reduce the, our risk perception. Unfortunately, this is a transformation that is happening, but it's taking time because of the different, let's say, perception. You cannot mix the business opportunity with the risk perception. That's why uh, the, where it is starting today, it is really driven by more by business until there is enough data, enough, let's say, uh, case studies that makes the risk officers more comfort comfortable about the asset class and more comfortable about, let's say, integrating all these advantages and all these benefits and, bottom and impact on the bottom line of beneficiaries into their underwriting process and procedures. It's happening, but it's a journey. I definitely agree with you. And please let me take one of the comments that has been developed in the last panel, I think it's very important in the context of Egypt. Whenever I travel anywhere, people review our numbers and ask me a question. Is Egypt a developed country or a developing country? Some of the numbers are saying that we are so much developed. Others are saying that we are underdeveloped. And I'm always telling them, you can always benchmark the whole world except Egypt. Egypt, from my perspective, is more or less playing the role of a hamster. We are always rotating in, in loops. And why is this the case? This is the case because Egypt has one of the most successful and uh, experiences that has been taught outside Egypt. I don't know whether there is somebody here from the Bank Al-Ahli, National Bank of Egypt. Anybody here? Egypt has one of the most successful experiences at a program called the EPAP. And the EPAP program was the Environmental Abatement Pollution Program. Uh, they have finished project phase one, phase two, uh, and currently I think phase three is under this uh, construction. And this has been one of the most important problems where technical expertise has been developed at this program, and they have not been utilized in transferring knowledge to the rest of the, of the market. I think this program is more than uh, 10 to 15 years back, okay? And it has been a, a couple of billions uh, Egyptian pounds. For, we, the last panel has mentioned, the colleague from Frankfurt School mentioned very clearly, we don't have, a, in Egypt, I, I see two problems. We are not allowed to make mistakes, and therefore we are not allowed to learn. We have to open the door a little bit for mistakes, because nations has never developed except by learning from their mistakes. But we have to have some sort of tolerance from the risk angle towards uh, not only for the uh, green finance, for SMEs, for women uh, leadership programs, and for others. Type. Taking this, I'd like Dr. Dahlia to take us, as she promised, through the journey of the CIB, with focus on the sustaining sectors program, please. Okay. And I, I just want to build on the discussion, and I thank uh, uh, Remco. Uh, you brought the business case, the risk and revenue. Fairest, Dr. Ihab. Uh, you all uh, addressed that sustainability or sustainable finance is about better risk management because now we have to broaden risk beyond the traditional credit market operational risk to include environmental and social risk. This is better for the bank. On the other hand, it's a, an opportunity, uh, uh, it's an opportunity, sustainability, uh, and it opens a whole stream for revenue generation, whether it's SMEs, financial inclusion, uh, gender, uh, whether it's um, energy efficiency, renewable, corporate clients are there to leverage the wealth and the, the opportunities brought about by the ESG or sustainability. That's why I insist to start talking about sustainability by uh, nailing and framing the business case. It's not because of commitment, Tremco, and we had this discussion yesterday, and it's not because it is responsibility. 
I mean, we, we tend to see it as mandatory, Paris Agreement. No, we want to see the business case for us. But actually, it is overlapping. You'll never be able to, to really implement it and internalize it unless we as bankers can see the business case. It makes sense, and it does. It's a better risk and better revenue. So if we agree on this, on this concept, on this understanding, the transition or the implementation is another thing. So to start the implementation after the conceptual part has been addressed, we have to be very structured and very systematic. And if this is done, the journey or the transformation is very easy. And here, I would like to comment on the principles for responsible banking. Uh, I was involved in the, found, the, the foundation part back in 2019-18 in my previous assignment. And why did we do this? Why did we think the principles for responsible banking is good? The principles of responsible banking came 10 years after the financial crisis. اللي سبقونا أول إحنا آخر ناس في ال financial sector the banks اللي ابتدوا بيها كان principles for responsible investment 2006 2012 principles for sustainable insurance the banking sector was the last 10 سنين بعد ال crisis لا it's not banking uh, the the usual banking في new version of banking fine فدخلنا فيها لأن لأن إحنا we need a framework to guide us how to do the transition, it's a new trend, it's a mega trend, sustainability. Banking, oil and gas, energy, but we are the sector, because empowerment, we bankroll all other sectors. So we are a governing sector. How to implement? Principles for responsible banking, for me, when we started the process, can a framework to help banks step by step, baby steps, how to implement sustainability. You think it is problematic, any department, CEO, you all, or ehna, okay. We have to be, have a very structured approach, and once this is in place, it is, خلاص, it's music, yeah. Uh, fa, the principles for responsible banking, لو أركز مثلاً, حاجة بتكلمني على sustaining sectors. The beauty of it, إن يا ملقيت ال experiences والحاجات اللي practically اتعملت, وتقرا البرنسبلز اللي هم الثيوري they are overlapping وما كانش في بينهم يعني احنا مش بننفذ البرنسبلز انا بقرا الديتيلز لقيت مثلا في برنسبل اسمه كلاينتس اند ستيك هولد كلاينتس نمره ثلاثه now banks have to revise the role you're redefining your role as banking beyond banking خلاص ليه؟ احنا بنتكلم على سيستم ترانسفورميشن System transformation will never take place if our role remains uh, limited to funding with technical assistance. Like I'm an IFC or an EBRT. No, it's the whole ecosystem. Sustaining sector, the example we did, when we did the system transformation, we had the risk management, we had the revenue. There was resistance in the management. Once, once they see the business case, not commitment, not responsibility, not mandate. Mandatory had it done, but it will never reach its potential. Once they see the business case and it takes time, we'll bank back here. What you put in, huh? The clients, but on they are not there. Our low risk and S risk. Eh, to know only. We have energy efficiency. We have to do with it. So we need to do a program. Tani, it's more sustaining sectors. Number three, the principles we all like. Any the relationship between banks. And clients should be redesigned and redefined to be empowering. Let's not hold by them. يعني لو إحنا في the green building, let's not show. أنت عندك certification the green audit. إحنا دي هالك. وده بنعمله مع the IFC. عندك عايزين technical technology, new technology, because banks have network. هنعمل لهم round table ونجيبهم. عايزين حاجة مع the regulators, مع the government. هنجيبهم. عايزين green code أو يفهموا. Aizim products, now we have a whole portfolio, corporate packaged programs. And hatta corporate do it by the retail. But then energy efficiency program, renewable energy, and then a green water management systems. Ilhagal aqua, any the banks go through walking audits with clients. They go alone, lil in hand, and it's environmental specialist. They were 
guided and instructed by Ferris, لأنهم كانوا partners معنا في Green Bond. بس اللي بيحصل إيه؟ إن we go together حتى ال multilateral development bank, the IFC, assume the new role. It's a walk-in audit. When we go to the mosque, we follow them. We tell them revise the business operation. You have an opportunity here. Ma ba'etch ba'a risk. When we go to the risk, we tell them we should take the loan. No, no, no. You have an opportunity to reduce your energy consumption. So it is risk, but actually it's a sales opportunity for the bank. When you were selling the energy efficiency loan, for حتى العلاقة داخل the bank بين the risk and the corporate. لا ده كل مرة you identify a risk you 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 point at an opportunity and you sell a product فبتدى بقى في تناغم فده مثلا نمرة ثلاثة customer relationship ما بقيتش بقى know your client بقى أنا مجل وكيل نيابة أنت فين عامل no we get close to the client عشان E and S بتخلينا more close more human وده اللي بيخلينا نكبر كبنك عشان كده في الآخر لنا. أول واحد alignment alignment with SDGs Paris Agreement National Strategy ممكن نقولها إن هي تبقى في ال annual report الكتاب إن إحنا مع لا ليه مهم إن أنا بقى aligned لأن لو strategy بتاعتي مش شايفة رادار و identifying the trends اللي حواليا مش عشان أنا I'm complying complying is one thing and seeing the business case وعيشها أنا لازم أكون صح صح وإيه الترانس دلوقتي؟ ده في European Union New Deal بيعمل carbon pricing. لا يبقى خلي بالي بقى ما روحش الأويل and gas. ولو روحت الأويل and gas قل له خلي بالك أنا مش هدي لك علشان مش علشان معلش ال environment ولا social ولا ال commitment because this is the new trend. ال trend renewable. هيجيلي لل principle two impact. دكتور إيهاب بيتكلم على target setting. Impact assessment معناه أنا bank لازم أمسك ال portfolio بتاعي من ناحية ال corporate أو retail. وشوف ايه اللي عندي كويس لان في حاجه كويسه كتيره جدا عندنا في البورتفوليو بتاع البنوك لو انتوا عملتوا دلوقتي اي ايدنتيفيكيشن او سكريننج فور يور بورتفوليو هتلاقي ريدلي 30% انت اوريدي عندك اي اس جي 30% كومبلاينج ويزاوت يو بينج اوير اوف ات الكويس هنكبره الوحش هنقلله هل انا بقلله علشان الانفايرمنت والكومبلاينس وباريس و نو انا بقلله لان وجوده على البورتفوليو بتاعي بيعمل لي قنبله موقوطه. هيجي وقت الاويل اند جاز ده عليه كاربون تاكس وكاربون برايسنج وال او هيجي وقت تغير الاكستريم ويذر كونديشنز هتخلي الاسيت اللي انا عندي ككولاترال مش موجوده، المصنع راح، الارض مش هيعرفوا يسددوا لي. فالامباكت اسسمنت از از ا فيري روبست تول تو بيوريفاي يور بورتفوليو ليه؟ عشان هتروح للنيو سيكتورز انتاب سيكتورز تعمل فلوس في رايح بقى للجديد انرجي افشنسي رينيوبل ات ذا سيم تايم انت بتقلل الريسك لان كل حاجه فيها يعني انفايرومنتلي ان فريندلي او سوشيالي ان فريندلي هي بتعد عليك هتدفع ثمنها هتدفع ثمنها فده مثلا برنسبل 2 فالاينمنت الاولاني بيخلينا مصحصحين الاستراتيجي بتاعتنا از روبست اند اجايل نمره اثنين امباكت بيخلي البورتفوليو بتاعك Very sensitive to risks and opportunities. I came to the client, and I go on the six principles. So, in the end, when we did it, there was a need for banks after 100 years to find a new framework. What's next? We did it. How did we do it? It is ESG. How to do it? When I went to the CIB, it was the implementation, the actual implementation. We did it. Having a structured approach to implement ESG, it's beautiful. Lenny, it is logical. Once you see the logic, كل واحد فيكم بقى can improvise. سواء بقى في ال legal, في ال audit, في ال marketing, في ال SMEs. SMEs is first. ف it's all about seeing the concept, seeing it is growth, the business case, and a very systematic approach. Thank you, Dr. Dali. I think I'm at the point where I'm going to address the questions that I'm going to address to Joanna. Joanna, I think uh, Dr. Uh, Dalia assisted you so much in, uh, in answering much of the questions uh, uh, related uh, to the ONAP. But San Isa, Diko, my own experience, something very strange happened to me. It took me three years collecting data from banks on the ISIC classification, which is required for the tool, to discover after three years that already banks has departments that are collecting data 
in the similar fashion which is the ISEC classification بس هم مسميناها في مصر الكود الرابع بالظبط كده الكود الرابع فاحنا قعدنا نجمع الداتا دي ثلاث سنين بس عشان ما كناش عارفين ان اسمها في البنك الكود الرابع when we discovered so we discovered that all banks in Egypt are ready literally all banks are ready to uh, uh, utilize the tool and to report their impacts or understand their impacts I will come back uh, to this point, but for now, uh, Joanna, I would like you to answer for the audience three particular questions uh, uh, in this respect. Why, if we are thinking about joining Elionep FI to understand our impacts, why should we join the Elionep FI in bullet points? Uh, what are the commitments that lies on us there, and how can we do it? For the sake of uh, this conference, we have designed two slides that can capture all what we have said. Appreciate uh, if we can show them uh, on the screen. And the two slides is simply on how and how. The first slide is how and simply the roadmap is we start by an ESG due diligence. We understand where your organization is across different variables and across the three schools we have contacted. Next, we do the benchmarking with national banks, with national regulations and international banks. Third, we provide a gap analysis report on where you stand and where, what are the actions that you will need to take. Next, we do the ESG strategy and policy formulation, and we embed the strategy and the policy into your policy documents. Next is the governance, establishing the committees, the ESG committees who will be responsible and then comes the capacity building. The, definitely capacity building goes all the way around, but comes the role of the capacity building type. What are the assisting documents and framework that we should have in mind? Next, please. The next slide is very important. We have collected for you all kinds of frameworks that can assist you into uh, your um, journey. And we have segmented these uh, uh, frameworks into operation, operational frameworks that you will utilize in your journey portfolio frameworks that will assist you in identifying the ESG factors and how you can work on them, risk frameworks, and then revenues, fra revenue frameworks. So for example, uh, in Egypt, uh, only uh, a couple of banks are signatories of the CDP, Carbon Disclosure Projects. Uh, uh, and currently, the Central Bank of Egypt is asking for doing your carbon footprint reports so this is the greenhouse gas protocol, which is the framework utilized to do so. Only a couple of organizations are members of the UNDP. Concerning the portfolio, uh, six or seven banks are members of the ONEP FI. Only two institutions, by the way, are members of the ONEP PRI uh, in Egypt. Uh, uh, and appreciate all of us if we can review the Value Reporting Foundation framework, which is a combination between the IFRS and the uh, uh, TCFD on producing a new regulatory framework that banks will be reporting on starting the next year. Uh, it's available online for free for all institutions. Uh, we can also see the risk frameworks, Equator Principle, TCFD. Uh, we have only one bank that is now working on alignment with TCFD. Environmental and social risk management, we have three or four banks there. And uh, we have also the revenue. Dr. Dali, have intervention. أول مرة أكون أطيب منك. This is very يعني rich, complicated. فا يعني أول مرة فأنا اللي بقول لا خلينا نقول the frameworks دي كل framework منهم بيدي policy و SOP guide لك يعني so ما كتير يعني for if you want to start I would say the start أهم واحد تفتكر the IFC perform مش عشان فارس جنبنا the risk. The IFC performance standards that inspires the E and S risk. Yes. اللي هو ال ABC. عشان لما نتكلم على ال SASB they are very very advanced. يعني مش advanced يعني سنة. فا it's good إن ال slide دي بتوري حضراتكم the plethora of frameworks. Frameworks ده كل حد ال risk, the climate risk, the TCFD, the IFC, the Equator A. Just to know they exist to guide banks. كل bank to cherry pick. دولت أكثرهم voluntary. 
لو انت هتاخد جرين بوند الاي اف سي هيقول لك لازم تاخد الاي اف سي برفورمانس ستاندردز وتعمل انفيرومنتال اند سوشيال ريسك فحسب حضرتك لو تقول لهم البرايورتي من وجهه نظرك از براكتشنر في الموضوع ده انهي فريم وركس اللي يروحوا النهارده يبصوا عليها؟ كويس آه من وجهه نظري هو ولا فريم ورك من دول من وجهه نظري الكل لازم يبدا بالجي ار اي الجلوبال ريبورتنج انيشيتيف فريم ورك ليه؟ لان الجي ار اي از ذا اونلي فريم ورك ذات از مالتيبل ستيك هولدرز مالتيبل ايشوز فافري ثينجز كومز اندر ذا جي ار اي ف having a GRI framework and standards would enable you and assist you in understanding which is the next, where are your gaps and which is the next uh, framework you will work, you will need to work on. ف definitely I agree with Dr. Dal. في عندي final question. I've tried to call you, but it's a very important question on the floor. Uh, I think uh, uh, Faris, if you can assist us in uh, your perspective about uh, uh, the future. Do you think, can you see that the curve of sustainable finance is increasing across the energy sector in particular and other sectors in general? Uh, well, with the current uh, crisis, you can see a challenge in the issue. Well, مثل ما بيقولوا شهادتي مجروحة لأنه what I've been witnessing over the past, let's say, at least six months is amazing in terms of dynamic, in terms of uh, engagement, and in terms of uh, concrete action on the ground. And all this sets the way and it sets the ground for, uh, for a solid growth. Akid, uh, يعني, we don't want also to, يعني, we want to be realistic. There are so many things to, to strengthen this, uh, this journey, but I'm sure that, uh, that it, has, it has started, it has shown concrete results, and I'm sure that everyone will, uh, will follow pace. And, um, and good luck for everyone. What, this is what I can see. <laughs> thank you so much, Ferris. Uh, thank you uh, so much, Ms. Joanna, Ditch, Sustainability Expert and PRB Implementation Support Manager at the UNAP. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Dali abdel uh, Chief Sustainability Officer at the Commercial International Bank. Uh, Mr. Remco Fisher, Climate Lead at the UNAP. Uh, Mr. Ferris uh, Kiagno, Lead Technical Expert in Sustainable Energy Finance Advisory. Uh, services at the Middle East and IFC, and definitely I would like with you to thank uh, the Egyptian Banking Institute on hosting us for the two days, and I'd like to thank you also for your time and for everything uh, for these two days. Thank you so much.